Canada expels a Chinese Communist Party diplomat. China responds by expelling a Canadian consul. This is the Great White North Report. Finally, something actually happened. The Liberal Party decided to take their balls out of their wife's purse and give their balls a tug. Of course, it was Melanie Jolie who did the, who pulled the trigger. And we finally expelled a diplomat who was accused of targeting MP Michael Chong's family. Michael Chong was a harsh critic of the Chinese Communist Party's human rights record. And I believe he has family in Hong Kong, and they they went after him, the CCP, according to documents. So what happened for a foreign affairs minister tweet statement declaring Zhao Wei persona non grata. And the diplomat has five days to leave Canada after being accused of targeting conservative MP Michael Chung's family living in Hong Kong. So Michael Chung is a conservative MP in the Toronto region, I believe. And he has family in Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong has been through a tremendous lot since the since the start of the before the start of the pandemic they had the umbrella movement where they tried to fight an extradition to the mainland bill and basically shut hong kong down for for months so the government has been under intense pressure to sanction Zhao Wei, who reportedly played a role in attempts to gather information on chong's family in hong kong in 2021 following his condemnation of beijing's conduct in the xinjiang region as genocide of course when you criticize the ccp they're going to find ways to strike back, especially if you're a Chinese person. So Melanie Jolie said, we'll not tolerate any form of foreign interference in our internal affairs. Diplomats in Canada have been warned that if they engage in this type of behavior, they will be sent home. I don't think this step goes far enough. I think we should have taken all our consulate staff out of China and just kept a bare bones embassy in Beijing right now to see what would happen and then do this, then see what happens. What would we... We know what happens now, but we'll get to that in a minute. So she sent out a tweet. Now, the Globe and Mail, they've been breaking this story left, right, and center, citing a top-secret document from 2021 and reported la last week that the Chinese government was targeting a Canadian MP and that Zhao was allegedly working on efforts to target Chong's family in China. So the government briefed Chong last week, and Trudeau and his cabinet have maintained that the report in question was never shared at the ministerial level in 2021, which it should have been at the time. Two years too late. That's going to be Trudeau's effort at. Two years too late. Everything he does is too late. Chong said the government should have taken similar action years ago. I quite agree. He should have been doing this years ago. Ever since they took Kavri and Spavor. We should have closed our consulates in China. Kicked out, their, kicked out all their consulates and embassies. We should have shifted our embassy from Beijing to Taipei. As a result, saying if you're going to act like this, we're going to recognize the other China under the one China policy. That ridiculous policy that the CCP demands that the world follow, even though there's two Chinas. There's Chinese Taipei and the, C the CCP, yeah, mainland China. As far as I'm concerned, the Civil War ended 70 years ago. Now, Chong pointed out that community representatives have been warning for years about Beijing targeting diaspora communities in Canada. I've known about that for the last couple of years myself, since probably 2018. And Chong hasn't been in touch with his family in Hong Kong and had an abundance of caution. Even the NDP got involved, saying it was appalling that the government took so long to make a decision on Zhao. At a time when no one cared about covering Spavor and putting pressure on on the CCP, instead we let Meng the Merciless Wanjo wander around in Vancouver during the day, go shopping, eating at dinner, having a great time in her million dollar mansion, of which she has two in Vancouver, while Kavri and Spavor were sitting in a detention center. That's when we should have been kicking out, we should have been putting her behind in a prison in retaliation, and we should have been kicking out their uh, consular staff. So Jolly said during a committee appearance last week that the government was weighing in the blowback from Beijing that would result from expelling Zhao. So obviously they've been thinking about it for a couple weeks. And now they want a careful consideration because the last time we did something like that, two Canadian citizens were put in, in prison, covering power. We also had a couple of Canadians on death, put on death row all of a sudden. Schellenberg is the one I know of. They also stopped ex importing our canola as well as lobsters at one, one point in time. To which my, my response is, hey, let them starve. They need us. China needs us more than we need them especially when it comes to food imports. 
we can always find someone else to sell to. And I would always say, well, let, well, let's sell to these guys and tell them to up the price and sell it to China. Make it more expensive for them. Because then the market goes up. The demand goes up. So Beijing promised retaliation for that action, even though they started this whole thing. Because they are extremely angered such a weak country like Canada would ever do something to them. So what they do? Oh, boo-hoo. They expel Canadian consul in Shanghai one day after Ottawa orders Chinese diplomat out. So Jennifer Lin Leilan, a Chinese diplomat in Shanghai, must leave by May 13th, which is three days from now. Oh boy, she'll get out of the smog and pollution of Shanghai. <laughs> so it's a tit-for-tat response for something they started in the first place. Plus they've also got those secret police stations, at least five of them in Canada, probably more. And who knows what, how else they influence Canadian politics. And it's about time our government got a little tougher on, on China. I prefer a lot more tougher. What are they going to do? So they said in response to the Canadian side's unreasonable provocation, China has adopted corresponding retaliatory measures. Say Wang Weibin, spokesperson of the, at the Chinese Foreign Ministry at a regular news conference. This is absolutely just an error theory. We urge Canada to immediately stop its unreasonable provocations. First of all, look in the mirror there, buddy. You've been provoking us ever since for the last five years. That if Canada did not heed Beijing's warning and continues to act recklessly, China will fight back resolutely and forcefully and the Canadian side must bear all consequences. Yeah, they tried that with Australia and look what happened. They come begging back to Australia for, for, co for coal because they realize they can't heat their all their homes and their people are freezing. No electricity either in a lot of places. So if they do that, hey, we're not going to feed you. <laughs> That's what we should do. If they, they want to play with our imports again, fine. We'll tariff some of their goods. You know, short-term pain for long-term gain. If they want to put pressure on our agricultural exports, so be it. Let them starve. Find out what happens when you don't have enough to eat. And then we also should put most of our navy in the Pacific and start going after their uh, fishing fleets because their fishing fleets poach everywhere. I would also move our diplomatic resources over to Taipei. Recognize tai Taiwan. Of course, China denies interference. They deny everything. And then it'll make them look bad, they'll deny. China said it never interfered in Canada's internal in affairs and has no interest in doing so. Right. Anytime you're critical of the CCP, they get all offended. They'll send their students out to protest things like the Uyghur genocide when they had anything about Hong Kong or Tibet, Falun Gong, anything like that. They're all up in arms. So China said he was profoundly disappointed to find out that the potential threat to his family in Hong Kong from a newspaper, and he's quite right, and criticized Trudeau's government for inaction. He has repeatedly called for Zhao's expulsion since the Globe report. Rightly so. Why not? So Trudeau is trying to pass the blame on to the Canadian intelligence services when he probably did get the memo but didn't think it was important enough. And Trudeau doesn't want to piss off China because he's scared. But this time he's got somebody... Melanie Jolie's actually got some balls in her purse and decided to use them. So... Any Canadians out there, let me know what you guys think. Should we send some more Chinese diplomats home, close all their consulates here, get a Foreign Agent Registry Act so that we know and put stiffer penalties on those who help the Chinese Communist Party in ways that are not use helpful to Canada? Let me know in the comments section. Until next time, this has been the Great White North Report.